episode of Meet Your Neighbors Brantford, and we're here today on site at the Brantford Food Pantry, and what we're going to do today is learn about the food pantry, its history of uh, when it began, its development over the years, and also uh, its operations today. So we're going to do this by interviewing Wendy Coles, who is the president of the Brantford Food Pantry. So welcome, Wendy. Thank you very yes, much. Well, thank you for doing this for us. And welcome. Oh, We're delighted to, to be with you today, Wendy. Okay, so uh, in terms of the history, uh, how and when did it begin? Who was involved in, in that? Well, you're lucky because today I just found a thing, uh, an article on how, when it was founded. Um, it was founded basically around the mid-1870s, oh, 1970s, <laughs> 1980s. Um, and yeah. it was founded by a bunch of churches and, and concerned citizens that wanted to get emergency food for those who needed it. And that could have been like, it might have started after a hurricane or it might have been that just through the counseling center there were a lot of people that were in need of extra groceries or needed groceries to begin with. Mm -hmm. So we're not really sure. All the records are kind of not available for that. We have we don't know where they are. They probably are with the previous people who are no longer with us. Um, so and it's just kind of grown from there. We started out actually in the um, Baptist church. I have to keep thinking which church because we've been to both. Um, and then we wound up at Indian Next School, and then we came to this new building in the uh, year 2000. Mm -hmm. um, and significantly, our population has grown immensely since then. So I started in 86. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. No, that's, well, okay. Um, that's okay. I was curious to know right away from the beginning that how many families were involved initially? Uh, I remember in 86 when I came into it, uh -huh. we were packing for about 15, sometimes on a busy week there were 20. 15 to 20 families. Wow. And last Tuesday we, we set a record for 140 families in the day. Wow. So it has gone up quite a ways. <laughs> of course we've also improved too. But. In, in the beginning I know your mom was involved. Right. Both my mom and my dad. Oh, and well, dad oh. yeah, I didn't both. know that. Um, mom was more into the packing and everything and she grabbed me one morning after I'd been working all night I was living at her house because I just moved back here from California she grabbed me and said my volunteers didn't come in can you help ah, sure. well, I took two picks put in my eyes and <laughs> off I went and I haven't stopped since wow. then wow. it just it just interests me and, and you know obviously well and in terms of your mom how when your dad I guess. Uh, how long were they involved? To what age? Dad was involved until 90, 91. And the year or his age? His the age. Year. The year. Oh. No, <laughs> no, because he developed cancer and died that year, uh, about a year after that. Uh, and mom, mom was here until she was 80. No. Yeah, she was 85, I believe, when she retired. Wow, that's Wonderful. Beautiful. That's so, beautiful. So you had lived in California for many years, right? right? Your career was a nurse. Correct. So what exactly brought you back to the East Coast and to Brantford? I actually came back to get to know my nephews a little bit before oh. they took off for school. Oh, that's a lovely news. And, <laughs> you know, because I hadn't really been around them for very much of their, most of their lives. Wow. Okay. And so your sister lives in the area. Right. Live. And a brother. And a brother. So you came back to family like many of us right. do. And then you started working at the volunteering. Are you staff or are you, is everybody volunteer? Everybody's volunteer. Wow. It's a total volunteer. Wow. Um, so you started working as or volunteering here as soon as you came east. Right. Wow. Fantastic. Uh, I'm curious, you know, you said that you were packing uh, for the people who were clients at that time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you put it all into bags and it was ready right. when they came. Right. right. And we did it, like right now, we, we let them choose 
according to the size of their family. Back then, we had the same type of operational. I mean, we packed everything. And we just put it in a bag, and when they came in, they got the bag that said family of three, family of four, whatever. Oh, I see. So, you know, it ha that part hasn't changed, you know, according to size of the family. The amount we give them has changed. Yes. And I think what you give them has changed. Yeah, Quite a bit. I think. Quite a bit. How so? Well, we give them more food than we did back then, and we are able to give a much bigger selection of fresh products. And I say that using quotes because with the meat that we give them, it was fresh when they froze it, but we get it frozen and give it to them frozen. We also give eggs. We're also now getting um, fresh milk, and this is something within the last couple of months. Uh, and we get, we've get we been getting, for the last maybe year, we've been getting a lot of fresh produce from places like Big Y and Stop and Shop, which has been a godsend. Yes. It just, people love it. They wipe us like a like plague of locusts. They wipe out the fresh produce. And it's so important to the nutrition. Right. Um, and then in the summer, you get, we get the community phenomenal garden. organic right. Right, community gardens. So that's and sometimes safe. other gardens, that will, other people will bring their, their, from their own. stuff from their own gardens, which wow. is nice. That's so, so nice. So there are other sources for the um, food stuff that comes in. I know. Uh, so you mentioned the... Um, the yeah, the chain stores, uh, the, there are, who else? There are fraternal organizations, I guess? Uh, um, the donations. They, they bring in donations, more monetary than anything. Oh. Well, and at the holidays? But you need that too. Yes, yeah. absolutely. And oh. in the, at the, during the holidays, they bring in like fresh turkey or turkey. frozen turkeys or fresh turkeys. <laughs> fresh um, frozen. Right. And that kind of thing. And they also help us out to deliver. And the religious organizations, uh, the churches. Big food drives from them. Food drive. And speaking of food drives, um, so they also do food drives, like I know there's one coming up in April. Correct. Do you want to tell our viewers the date and what they can do to help us? It will be April 13th at the Stop and Shop in Brantford, and we will be there from... 8.30 in the morning until 6 o'clock at night, which I'm not looking forward to because it's a very long day. That we hope we start coming down the Stop and Shop and put a couple of goodies in it. One can is good enough. Yeah. Or one box. But I found, you know, last year, David and I volunteered with you. I was so heartwarmed because people were so generous. Absolutely. You know, you ask for one can. Mm -hmm. Not a carriage load, but a lot of people came out with tons of stuff in their carriage stores. loads. It was beautiful, beautiful to witness. So and if not, they they throw in money into our our, our buckets. Right. I can't remember now how much we made, but it was several hundred dollars on top on of on top of all, all of the food. food. One gentleman, didn't have a new change, he gave us a fifty dollar bill. Oh, gosh. And we actually went back and said, "Are you sure you didn't need a different size bill?" Because fifty dollars sounded I mean, it seemed like so much. It is so much, and it it's is. so generous. So in terms of uh, funds, uh, so there are other sources that uh, perhaps grants maybe? or we do, uh, we do apply for grants. Jay is in charge of that. Mr. Jay, not Mrs. Jay. Yeah. He's oh, in so charge of that, and he has several places that he goes for grants. Well, since you mentioned it, let me ask. Uh, Mr. Jay is on the board. Correct. He's the vice president. So that's the governance. Is a board of directors. Correct. Like, uh, and they meet fairly frequently, or once a once month. Once a month. Once a month. That's great. How many people are on your board? I wish I had an asset. Okay, sorry. About I think that. there's twelve, but there might be thirteen. Okay, that's fine. Um, and you had mentioned that we're serving about 120 to 140 families now a week. And I know, as being a volunteer right. with you, that we're getting new families every week. About how many? Two to three new families a week. Every week. That's quite. That's quite. It's scary. It is. It's scary. That is scary. Because um, there's, and, and we don't know how many we don't have. I know. That need it. That that's right, and that's why we're here today because uh, we, wa we wanted to talk about that as well, and we will down in, in a moment or so. But how many volunteers, Wendy, do you have? I think we are now about 30. 
And um, can you explain to our audience uh, their functions? The type of work. The type of work right, that it depends on. Uh, kind of, we've got several what we call I call sections. Like one section is here taking um, clients around and helping them to get their food, and pack it up, and all that, telling them what they're allowed to have, what they're not allowed to have, etc. Then we have another bunch. Usually it's the men who go back in the sorting room, right. and I think we're going to see that later. Yes, we are. Um, and they will bring in anything that comes in, um, food from the, the food bank, food from a store, um, food from a food drive, whatever. They'll bring that, weigh it all, and then put it in various boxes and just put it on the shelves where it belongs. Right? Yeah, I do. That. Dave knows that all too well. <laughs> I do a lot of that. Uh, and then, so, and then after that, some of it has to come back out and be put back on these shelves, which we'll show you later on. Yes, we will. So you'll see the difference in shelves. That's and right. that's one of Dave's jobs. <laughs> He's good at that. <laughs> Um, let's see now. So yeah, so we would like to know um, who really are your clients? Our clients basically are anyone that walks through the door that feels that they need help with groceries. The only thing they have to do is provide proof of residency that they live in Brantford. Right, no longer proof of financial We don't care about that. And there's, they have a special form that they have to fill out because of the government. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, and in the middle of it, there's a little section that says, if you're below this for this size family, then you qualify. Well, we tell them not even to fill it out. Yeah. <laughs> I figure if the government wants to know those numbers, they can come and get it. So how did the change happen, and when did it happen? I think it was pretty recently. It, was, it was about a year ago. Uh, Bernie Boudreaux, who is the CEO of the Connecticut Food Bank, said there are no longer financial qualifications to use the food banks. Like food right. Yes. Great, I'm for it. Right, right. Um, you know, and, yeah, and speaking of the food bank, so the food bank, uh, the pantry has a uh, pickup truck. Correct. And sometimes some of the uh, workers here, like Gary, who uh, some of the volunteers who who are responsible people, I'll tell you, um, even. Uh, use their vehicles because it depends on how many uh, thousands of pounds you're going to go get. Sometimes they, uh, I know the truck has gone up to get anywhere from 900 pounds to 3,000 or more pounds. So we send the truck up to the pantry every Friday. Right. right. Order we, it, we order it on Tuesdays. Order on Tuesdays. Through the food bank. And we get a lot of food from them at a very good price. That's um, wonderful. If not free. Wow, which we get so both, great. and it, it's fantastic. And then um, the guys pick it up on Friday morning early and bring it down here. Uh, before we take a tour, when, yes, Wendy, uh, we'd like to know the hours of operation. Okay, the Stay hours of our audience. I can. Yes. Please. Tuesday morning, we're open from 8.30 until 11, and also in Tuesday afternoon from 4.30 to 6.30. Then on Friday morning, it's 9 a.m. until 11.30. And the reason for later at, on Friday mornings is because the food bank truck comes in and we have to keep people out of the way or they're going to get bombarded by groceries on their heads. <laughs> That's right. Is our fear. <laughs> yeah. So I think this might be a very good time to take a tour, if sure. that's okay with you. So oh, let's yeah. go. Okay. Okay, when they come, they'll come in through this door here, come around here and sign in here, and we put them in the computer, and then they proceed this way. They'll get a card with what they can have, what their family is allowed to have. They can take all of it or whatever they want because it's client choice. So we don't have to pack the bags and give them everything. And then we move over this way. Okay, we give them this card and it has what they're allowed to have for their families for the size of their families. And it kind of starts, it goes cereal, juice, and meat, and here it's cereal, juice, and meat. So it kind of goes along this way for the most part, but then when you get down here a little further, we may have an extra that we add in, or we may not have something like, we don't have Jello because it's so expensive now, and we've just kind of given that up, but I didn't want to redo the cards. Being lazy. 
So anyway, they get to pick from here. And then they'll come over here where we usually have eggs and then fresh meat will be on this table. This week we happen we'll to have over here just so you can thanks to the the generosity of one of our volunteers. She took her sign now. She's um, been saving she saves up um, and brings in a uh, detergent or something else and every third or fourth month she'll give out detergent to everybody, mm -hmm. which is really great. It is. So and they love it, of course. And then we go around this way. So as you, you would see, the table is, is empty right now, but this morning when our clients came in, it was shop full. Um, we had lots and lots of eggs, dozens of eggs. You know, a person can take a dozen of eggs per family. And then we have, uh, we had, as you can see, this sign here, one per family mild cheddar cheese, big chunks of cheese that almost every family wanted, beautiful cheddar cheese. And then this table is chock full. Eileen keeps it so full. Um, and uh, of all the meat, chicken, and fish, uh, and people can get, just as the sign says, I don't know if you can zoom in, Joe, but it says two meat or two fish or one of each, or you can get a whole turkey. So it's really a bountiful feast. It is really quite wonderful. Through As the, the clients come through, they get a volunteer who goes around with them, and the volunteer kind of keeps an eye out. But some people like to take a little bit more than they're allowed to. Most people are pretty good about it, but there's they a few really that are. come in. But And also to help them pack in their bags, we have them bring their recycle bags to use, and, and then they stand up in these boxes, and then they can fill them with whatever they you know, they choose from the shelves. Yeah. And then um, usually the volunteers help pack. Yeah, I'll just add one other thing. We used to give our, our clients boxes, but we are totally running out. And so clients now are asked, sometimes we can provide some if we're given, but uh, reusable bags, not single uh, plastic reusable bags, but reusable bags that can last and last and last. Some bring in wonderful cloth bags that they can actually wash. And then we fill and we pack for them. So like our client would pick and then if I'm, if I'm taking the client around, I'm packing in the bags for them. This is where we store the eggs in, in this beautiful freezer that we got free from the Connecticut Food Bank, I might add that. Um, and this is probably about a day's worth of, they'll probably mostly go out in one day. After they go around the corner, which is where we just were, they come around here to our bread and pastry section and our fruits and vegetables on the other side. And usually, lately, for some reason, we've been getting a ton of extra bread. Um, so they're allowed to get two or three different things here. And we've got all kinds. We've got sliced bread, we've got English muffins, we've got uh, flat bread. Um, Tortillas, non bread of different stuff that we Bagels have. come and in. If they can have two or three, and especially it's nice for the kid, if they have kids in their family, so they can make sandwiches for to take to school or whatever if they're not on uh, lunches at school, and which we, a lot of them are not. Right, and we encourage them to freeze it as well if they, you know, because I right. don't know, Joe, that you can get this sign, but it says, extra extra bread so as much as they want to take today was what you know. except for the guy who likes to take the whole box <laughs> we do draw the line there that's right okay and, and here as you can see we have um our some of our vegetables uh, potatoes onions and carrots are pretty much staples because we get them almost all the time from the food bank the rest we can't always depend on because we just never know what they're going to have or what we're going to get in in this case, we have sweet potatoes, we have um, lettuce, we have some baby eggplants, lemons, gorgeous lemons, Take mushrooms, apples. We usually can get apples, not all the time. But yeah, then. and I just want to add, today we even were giving them the, these bags of fresh peeled garlic. I can't tell, oh boy, is that potent. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I can't no, no, tell no. you how many people were thrilled. Uh, they said, oh my God, that's exactly what I needed. I had to go out and shop. So it's really a joy when you see you know, that we can really meet yeah. needs. And then, and then over here, we have all our pastries. Um, and usually we have quite a few. There are some days when we're a little slow in pastries. It depends on what the uh, different 
markets send us. But we've been very, very lucky, and lately we've been super lucky to have a lot of pastries, and, and people love it. They just, mm, they do. And I want to say eat it up, but that's not funny because that's what you do with it. That's like what you this. do. I love but it. they just get so excited. <laughs> I know. I'd like to add one thing. <clears throat> now, everything that's out here with produce is out because, as we said, we were here this morning. It's a Tuesday, and Tuesday morning we we served a lot of families. Right. Tuesday afternoon t into the evening, they're going to serve. They are going to serve more families. And so the produce is out now. Um, the meat is not. They'll put that out when it's appropriate. But uh, otherwise, it would all be in the refrigerators and freezers that we have. Not the produce, but we have uh, all kinds of coolers in the refrigerator. We'll show you that after. In here, we have um, different kinds of more produce that they've sent us. There's like bags of salad. And there's sea seed noodles. There, these are sweet potato noodles. We have beets, turnips, squash, all that kind of thing. We have some fresh peppers, which are kind of nice. They're yeah, beautiful too. And uh, various other kind of things. It's, it's a little bit low today, but, but compared to what we were last week. But some you know. people didn't know what this is, and that's a, another beauty of the blue pantry, as I see it, because sometimes people come in never having been exposed to some of these foods. And so we share amongst each other. And those of us that have used it or cooked it will tell them how to, or they tell us how they right, do right. it. So here's a purple cabbage, and it's, you know, someone, a couple of people at, what is that? They had no, they had never seen it. So it's a beautiful thing to expose and, and be able to share such a bounty. And these, these vegetable noodles, m most of us, have no clue, uh, <laughs> you know, of how to use it, how to cook it, what to do with it, and it's like pasta, but it's all with uh, organic vegetables, so it's quite wonderful. And I'll just throw in the conveyor belt and the rollers we have here. Our so lifesaver. Yeah, so that when our uh, deliveries are coming in, the belt is running. Makes it easier to uh, get everything down, and at other times there is a system where uh, through Sarah, right? Sarah delivers uh, for the whole, to people who are clients but can't get out. Right? Correct. Correct. So uh, Sarah comes with its vehicles, um, and uh, they. We send the produce up and we put it in their vehicles and they deliver it to clients who are homebound. Which is such a wonderful way. And also, if a client wants, we can we can just take the boxes that we take them around and pack, put it on the conveyor and send it up. They can bring their car around and just stick it from the conveyor belt right into the back seat, right in the back of their car. Otherwise, everything is done with the carts. We have several carts. They take them out themselves or we help them take it out. And by the way, this is the back end. I don't know if you'll get a view of that from where you are. I could, uh, yeah, the back end of the uh, <laughs> display where people pick up their stuff on the other side, all the food that we showed you, this is how we keep stocking it as we go along. Throughout the whole morning or afternoon. And now, viewers, we're going to take you in the back where sorting is done. This is what we call our sorting room, and when the food comes in, it's generally kind of in boxes right where I'm standing. There's a there's a long table. You may not be able to see it. And then people put it in whatever boxes it is. As you can see, they all have labels. And then they go in various parts of the shelving units. Um, some will come in here. Some will go up on that side. And then we have another hallway down there where we can put even more food. So we really have lucked out when we got this place. Um, even up here we have, on the shelves across from where I'm standing, there's food on those shelves too. So it's been, a, it's been a really a godsend to have this area because we can fill it up with food. And as the donations come in and as the, uh, uh, everything is weighed. Correct. So that we have a count for many purposes, I guess. So more for stats and to make sure that how you know how we're doing and how much we actually um, every maybe two years we weigh everything that a client takes out 
We take a week. And every client that goes out, they get all their bags weighed. And that way we can figure out how many pounds of food they're getting, essentially, or average it out, anyhow. Um, you know, some people will take 10 pounds of food and they're, they're good with that, and other people will take 60 pounds of food, depending on the size of their family. But it helps us to keep the stats and to keep current of what we need to get more of. Like, if we give out 3,000 pounds of peanut butter, then we need to keep bringing it in. That's we don't give out that much, but just saying. So we, give um, a lot. <laughs> we do give a lot. <laughs> and uh, as far as um, uh, frozen foods that come in, perishables like that, that's what this is, right? This is our walk-in freezer, which we're very proud of. And I can't tell you the exact cubic footage, but it holds a lot. <laughs> um, and you don't want to stand in it for too long. I, and for years now, um, several years up until this year we actually got a different space for turkeys but during thanksgiving when everybody's bringing in turkeys and they're having turkey drives all over and various um organizations and in in businesses in the community bring in a bunch of turkeys we fill it with turkeys and i do remember one year we had it filled way out to here we have to actually put a board across the front here to keep them from falling out. And one year we had juice in the very, very back that we needed. We had to send a little boy up to climb the turkeys, which were all frozen together at that point. But there were so many turkeys in there that it, they were practically falling out. So that was fantastic, because we had enough for Christmas, Thanksgiving, and Easter. And I, I know, too, um, when the meat came in today, all the frozen goods, even some pies, frozen uh, pies, chicken pies, and stuff like that. Uh, they were weighed in, then we brought the boxes back here, there were quite a few boxes, and we sorted them out into these boxes, and then we have uh, pork products here, and chicken products there, and beef products, and so on and so forth. And fish, and clam strips. Yeah. So, that's the freezer. Cool. Huh? That's one of our <laughs> Very cool. Plus, we have a lot of chest freezers. So this has been really fascinating, Wendy. You're doing such an important job. Thank in you. Community. I love it. I love it. Yeah, it's, it. it's just really awesome. And next month, um, do you want to share on what? We'll sure. Do? Yeah, there's a, actually a food drive that uh, helps to benefit, particularly, the food bank here. In uh, in Bradford. And that food drive is a nationwide food drive, but only the stuff in Bradford comes here. Not everything from all over the nation. Uh, and But that drive is run by volunteers from the post office. Is that correct? The it's the postal, postal workers. The postal know, workers the do it carriers. on their own time, it's though. It's the letter carriers. Um, yeah, they're the drive. employees of the postal service but after they do their uh, route on the 12th of May this year, that's Mother's Day weekend, the Saturday of Mother's Day's weekend, Day weekend, they will then go out, do the route again, picking up all of the groceries that people have left on their mailboxes or near their mailboxes and bring it back here and then we get to work. Yes, we do. So we'll be interviewing David one. So the plan is, hopefully, we'll be able to work everything out with the Postal Service and the volunteers, uh, the volunteer who heads that up, uh, and uh, be able to do filming of their people, uh, doing some of their work, and then uh, all of the people here sorting what there is that right. comes in. So in the meantime, another and, long day. Right. Yeah. Until then, we thank you so much for joining us on Meet Your Neighbors, Bradford. Until we meet again, Au good revoir. eating. <laughs>